Today I'm going to stream some open source work on Wagtail. So I have a few ideas in mind, but not really any kind of fixed plan. So we'll, we'll just see what happens. Um, my basic idea so far is uh, I've been working on this, this bug fix for Wagtail's rich text editor called Drafttail uh, that uh, I built. Um, this bug fix is something that my Patreon um, supporters have um, say, said they wanted fixed, basically, um, said they cared about, let's say. Um, so that's what I've been working over the months of May, and uh, it's this specific GitHub issue, and um, I fixed it. Woo! Hooray! And now it's time to ship it to Wagtail. So, um, long story short, <laughs> it's um, quite an intricate issue, and I wanted to solve it in a way that was reusable by by DraftJS um, people. So I made it, I made the fix inside a separate project, um, and then had to import that into the editor. And now we have to release a new version of the editor and ideally publish it to Wagtail uh, today. So, oh, sorry, just make the pull request. Whether it's uh, merged or not, that's another matter. Um, so I'll just quickly list the steps up there. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see, I'm still working out my Twitch setup. Right now this is on the big screen, but I don't really know if it's um, readable enough when, when you look at this on the recording. Um, and of course I'm always changing my setup from stream to stream just to make it easier to compare. But uh, if it's, the text is not big enough, please feel free to let me know, and um, I'll try to make it more, more readable somehow. So, um, one, fix the bug, done. Two, um, publish a new release of the editor, not done. Let's say to do. Three, PR to Wagtail, maybe three. Um, update editor in Wagtail to do four. Yeah, let's be more realistic. Four test in Wagtail. I don't expect this to make any difference whatsoever where the editor is. So it's going to be a very boring step, but boring but necessary. <laughs> uh, test in Wagtail to do and PR to Wagtail is the last one, number five. Um, and let's see what time is it. Um, it's 8.36 over here. Let's hope we get all of this done in less than an hour. <laughs> Go! Okay, step one. I have the editor up and running for development over there. Um, so let's just open it and quickly try out the fix. Um, hopefully we won't have any code to do because I've already made a pull request and merged it to master on the editor. So it should really just be like, check again that it works. And that's it. Um, I don't know how long this has been running for, so I'll just restart it quickly. And hopefully my computer will be able to handle this and the recording and everything else. Uh, let's stop that for a second. Okay, let's hope this increases the frame rate on, on Twitch. Um, mm -mm. Yep, no sight because it's not running. And I'll increase the font size here as well a bit. Hopefully this is still readable. Um, so releasing Drafttail, I think I made a list of like the steps that are necessary for a release because I tend to forget those very easily when moving from project to project. So I love to make lists of the things that are manually done still. Um, so this is the readme and then contribution guidelines. For small projects, I tend to just put them in the README, but for bigger ones, I actually have um, an audience looking at the docs, I put them in a separate file. Um, so make a new branch, update the changelog, update version number, make a PR and squash merge it, like on master with a PR. Okay, yeah, great. Let's do that. Um, branch, git core, char, release, What's the version? Like, I have no idea what the version is. Uh, like 0.19. 
Well, technically the only thing that's changing here is this bug fix and it really is a bug that you would expect to be fixed and yeah, if anyone was relying on the previous behavior, it really was uh, not meant to ever be a feature. So I think it would be okay to make this a patch, semantic versioning release. Yeah, I put this in added, but it's really a change. Not an addition to the API or anything like that. Um, so let's make it uh, v o dot seventeen dot two. I think that's a fair assessment. See, that's the problem with semantic versioning. It's only as semantic as your interpretation of it. Um, yeah, and we'll make a commit that updates the version number. So I think that's over there, and probably inside the package .log as well. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it really matters to do it as well here as well, but kind of makes more sense for this to be updated at the same time as the package.json one. And then we need to add a new section in the change log over there. These days I tend to use some automated tools to generate this from the commits because um, even though it doesn't look as good, uh, it's much less time, cons time consuming and error prone. But for this project, it got started like a year and a half ago, so it's still all manual. Um, so change log, package.json, and what else do we have? Make a new branch. Okay, well, reasonable enough. So before I do this, we'll just check one last time that it does work. Because it would be a bit stupid to release something that's broken. Um, and to test that properly, I'll open up my draft.js paste test document. Okay, let's see if I can get it open on my secret screen over there. Just have to look it up in my Google Drive, and I don't know what kind of files I have there. Um, probably nothing too important, but still. And so we can try it quickly. The bug fix is that now it should just work when you copy and paste from one editor to the next. So, some, for example, something that didn't use to work was copy and pasting uh, horizontal rules like that, um, just because they are custom to my implementation. So Draft.js didn't know how to handle these by default. And line breaks, that was just a bug in Draft.js. Uh, line breaks are not specific to what I'm doing right here at all. So if I copy this and paste it into this thing called all built-in format, it should keep everything. Yeah, it does. Um, this custom format example here, the embed is um, something that Wagtail has, so the embed is also active up there, as well as the document um, link, which is up there as well. So if I copy and paste this into the Wagtail features, it should um, keep the embed, keep the document, and lose this like special kind of, what did I call it, redacted styles, um, lose the blog code and lose the code, the code. Yes, and it does. So this is a P, this is just a P, and it still has the document, and it still has the embed, so perfect. So, oh yeah, and I, if I only select part of it, whoop, yeah, works the same. And if I select part of that, and if I do cut this time around, not paste, not copy, still works the same. Okay, I think that's um, plenty of testing, because I've already done browser cross-browser testing in a separate session, So, and I'll do it again in Wagtail. So this, this was just to check that I had the right, right version, basically. Um, yeah, so that's my paste, paste test document. So the fun, fee, fun test to do here is to copy everything from Google Docs into Draftail and then copy it back into the Google, Google Docs and see what sticks and what doesn't. Um, yeah, new section, 
change not added version number version number that should be it and this will probably be the last release to draft out by the way i think that once this is out i'll call it a 1.0 just because this was the biggest bug that still wasn't fixed and i wanted to to have a look at the, then there are plenty of bugs left um, but most of them i don't think are that urgent to fix there are still a few others I'd really like to fix, but I just don't have the time to look into them right now. So I, I think 1.0 is a fair statement, and if we do fix bugs that are breaking changes, I'll be more than happy to release 2.0 as well. It's just a signal for people who might consider using this editor, you know. Um, so this test, step one, copy everything, simple enough. And let's put it inside the editor that replicates what has features. And paste. And drum roll. Some of it is removed, some of it is kept. So it's removed the H ones, for example, because um, they are not active in this particular editor. It's kept the H2, H3, H5, H4, H6, perfect, builder list, number list, star list is now builder list, whatever. The image is still there because I think I configured it like that, but if you were inside Wacker, it would just drop it, uh, if it was not from Wacktail. Um, line break is there, that becomes trial image as well, why not? Emojis are there. The links are there, bold, italic, and the other ones are not. And now I copy, and I paste back in here, at the top, and nothing happens. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, this is quite a big paste, so it's fair enough for it to take a while. Okay, so there is some um, list depth issue right there. It should be one level deeper. I have no idea why it's not that way, and I don't think my change impacted that at all. Like, it still worked the same before. So I think I'll just leave it like that for now. Hmm. Do I want to do a quick check? I probably want to do a quick check uh, against the current released version. Um, I think this is probably a recent enough copy of Wagtail. Maybe not the latest, but definitely something that exhibits the same um, paste, copy and paste processing. And that's what it does over there. What's the password? Hmm. Probably that. Hmm. My recording says it's dropping frames. I should try to find a way to reduce that. Um, Maybe if I close some tabs, it probably won't be enough. I'll have to work on this setup later, but the basic problem is that I have no idea what I'm doing. So every time I push the streaming to production, I'm always also testing. Mm. So let's remove the latest paste. Yep. And open the editor in here. I know I did change how the how the copy was done, so that's why I, I want to double check. Um, but I won't go into the details right now because it's unless someone wants to because it's quite um, intricate to explain. So paste in draft fail just like we did before, and the same seems to be kept except for the images because it's configured differently um, and now copy and paste again mm, and here it keeps the nesting so is this just a matter of how it's rendered or did I break something Let's try one more time and compare them side by side. Uh, 
Okay. Nested as usual. Okay. Well, this time around it works. Ah. I'm copying from draft head to draft head. Of course it works. Stupid. Should be copying here. Yeah, we're losing the um, list depth. Okay, that's something I have to think about. Are we losing anything else? So, this is mostly irrelevant. Emojis look fine, character replacement looks fine, soft line breaks look fine. Then this is the irrelevant part in the one coming from my new version. Uh, we're losing the soft line break for some reason. Okay. I have to think of that one. So what did we lose? Soft line break was different. And code block table image code block table image right there. I think the font is different as well. Here it might be using the default one I used elsewhere in the document, whereas here it's using the one from Wagtail. Yeah, this is probably because it's not inlining the styles um, So the lists are nested and the titles seem to be using the right styles. Yeah, and list nesting, that's the big difference. And then the links, um, hmm, no links up there. Yeah, but there's no links here either, it's just bold text. So the thing is, for, like, for example, for the links, this is just because of the fact that this might not be using a link tag, which sucks a bit, because at the moment it means you need to use the right semantic tag in, in here in order to have the right tag in the clipboard. Yeah, I'm using a span. Oh no, I'm using an A tag, but it doesn't have an href. Okay, so maybe all it would take is to add an href to the A tag. And then for the list item, let's let's check out. Um, so what we can do if we want to check this out is to um, add a global paste listener. So as you can see, I wasn't expecting this not to work. I really thought it would just be about open source management and zero coding, and in the end. Where are we now? <laughs> Coding. Um, so my paste document is back to back to default. I'm gonna take it here, paste it in the editor. Say there. And now I want to add um. Add event listener for the paste and e and what do I want to do in here? I want to um, console log e dot clipboard data dot get data text HTML. Oops. 
Hmm. Ah, yeah. Okay. And now I want to copy this and paste it wherever, really. I just want the paste handler to fire. Yep. So now we have this big string, copy. Mm -hmm. And let's see if we can switch it to HTML. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to be the big difference. My implementation doesn't doesn't inline styles like that. Um, and I didn't think that it would be necessary for list items. What are they called? Build at a list. What? Ah, uh, yeah, it's on the one very big line. Format document. Let's just world wrap this. Oh, God, that's a lot of very nice, nasty HTML. I don't know why it's not syntax highlighting the second line like that. Maybe it's just too long for it. Um, Bulleted span span. Oh, it's an ally. Okay. Yeah, it's an ally in a UL. The only issue is that um, it might be. Does it infer the depth from the margin? The nested one has so div again margin left three em counter reset. Okay, I have no idea how it infers that. I think. I'll go ahead and merge this anyway with the caveat that it might change how well the paste is interpreted by something like Google Docs. Because that seems to be that seems like to me like less of a problem than hmm. I really don't know what to think of this. I need to do more testing. That's what it comes down to. Um. Mm -hmm. So let's just go with minus the list and nothing else. And I make a new new doc. So let's keep it simple. List one, list two, that's going to be deeper, and list three. So copy and paste that from the previous version of Drafttail into the doc, and then do the same thing with the new version. List one, list two, list three. Okay, new version first. Ah, let's just paste it here and see what happens in the console. So that's the paste coming from the new version, which of course will be different because the point is I changed it. 
But let's see in what way it's different exactly. HTML. It's too bad I don't have a formatter for this. That's close enough. Okay, so that's from the new version and from the old one, and that works fine in here. Um, oh yeah, and I want to do it in here as well, just so I can see um, the paste in the console. And here I'll do the same kind of shenanigan. So that's the part that's different. Those ones have style, have a style tag that has all the stuff on it. Where is the li and tag? It's over there. Okay. So I'll just take that on those ones and bring it back here, span, and then this div ought to be there and like that. And there's no UL right there. That's a bit funky. And there is one here. Oh, that's interesting now. Ah, so we lost the UL over there. That's interesting. That might be why then. That and the styles, of course. So the, good que the big question is, is it because of the missing UL or is it because of the styles? And why is the UL missing to start with, you know? I think the browser's copy-paste implementation knows something I don't. So, new implementation, paste. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So I assume if, it, if I do this, it will have the UL and it will make it into a list. Just not the right depth. That's just because we were inside the block, the absence of the UL. But here, when we're still inside the block, and still has it. And then for some reason it's not the right depth. What's the normal depth for an ally? Yeah, so it's one level too deep for whatever reason. It's probably inferring that from the margin. Um, let's try it out quickly. Mm. What's that you will? Oh yeah, it's only a vertical one, that's right. So let's see what happens if I do this. No margins whatsoever. Mm. 
and that would be for that yep and then copy yeah so it's really because of the styles fuck that's that's fucked up so somehow Google Docs is reading the margin on the list items and deciding on the oh no it's not even deciding on the depth it's just fuck yeah if it was a deeper list item it would be like that not like this so this is really just it reproducing the margin as um, indentation I don't know what you call this type of because if I remove the list item right there yeah yes yeah, so that's just me interesting if I convert it into a normal text by using the shortcut for like paragraph in Google Docs it moves it to the side oh, that really is strange okay point is the previous behavior was different but I doubt it was any better um, of course ideally it would work um, it would just work, it would just create the following test1, test2 yeah like that, test3 which it does but except it's not proper list item indentation it's just visually indented which is not what we want at all so let's see if I undo all of my changes right there and up yeah still does the same thing still doesn't align it properly with the list item I would do like that um, whereas I think the new behavior actually does that so new list item oh boy wrist checks okay so at least now it's putting them at the right level because there is no crazy styling going on and it's the right font as well um, but there was also this issue with um, line break so let's try that as well I also wonder why one of one of these um, had the UL and the other one didn't like I know that technically it's because the selection is within the block so it's not going to take the block container it will just take what's inside of it but still <laughs> Am I in the center of my camera? Not really. Hmm. Okay. No line break, no surprise. And no list item, no surprise either because of what I was telling you about. Like we just copy the block's text, not, not its container. Yeah, so that's a, that's a problem. But is it a real line break or is it just two paragraphs? Um, and the way to know is copy the list item by making a separate thing. So here should be no difference whatsoever. Yep. And here it should be. Yeah. Okay. So it really is a line break. So why is it? disappearing in case number two let's paste that again over there so that's our line break wow so much stuff is it just because it has a white space no wrap in the styles it would be a bit silly language mode yeah my computer really is dying it says that it's dropping 16% six, of the frames um, so you'll probably notice it on the video luckily it's programming nothing is moving that fast that if you cannot see it instantly 
causes an issue to the understanding. Um, so that's the one from the old version, and then from the new one, copy, paste, clear the console, and ta-da! It's interesting how that one seems smaller, 1300 and 2000. And we do this, which is my cheap um, document formatting. Okay, so in both cases, the line break is just a um, line feed character. Difference I get. I guess is that here it might say it might have some style for that like the white space pre-wrap whereas here it doesn't So there is a quick and easy way to try whether this is because of this or not. We go here and we add it in the HTML, quite simply. Um, so it was on the block. This is the block or is it? No, that's the block. And we do white space, pre-wrap. And now try again. And paste. And it works. So it really is because of pre wrap. It's interpreting that it's a line break, and otherwise it's not. Otherwise, it just thinks it's any kind of unsemantic um, new line in the text. So, in order to fix this, what do we need to do? We need to set this in the HTML. Um, okay, that's something I should probably fix directly in the, in the implementation, I mean. Because my, impl my impl implementation does is that it gets the HTML from um, the DOM from where the selection is on copy without um, aligning the styles and I think that the aligning the styles part is a good thing because it means that um, you get the semantics from HTML rather than from the inline styles but still the Google Docs seems to be relying on those and that one that one seems to be quite a quite a big change so the list for example I think it's good that we don't Infer um, nesting in a like half assed way from from the margin, but here the line break is pretty much there or not. I wonder what else could have this case where um, it's a problem for it not to have the right styles. I know it might like infer styles from bold, for example, but for bold, I mean, you probably want to use a strong tag anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But there are no 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 specific tags for those line breaks in in draft it's draft JS, sorry. It's just going to be line feeds. So uh, are there other cases like that? Widows. What's widows? And how does it know on which tag to put it? That's the part I understand the least. Like, why is it putting this on this div? Uh, because it's oh, okay. Because there is text inside, and it's the highest level. I could do the same thing. I could inline the styles. Like, do the get completed styles for text and put it, put them right here. But does it make any sense to do so?
Hmm. Any ideas, Twitch? Because I don't. Let's think about it for a second. Um. Okay, I'll pause this for a bit and try to think seriously of what I should be doing right there. And come back in a second. Okay. Take two. So, we we'll fixed the bug. I thought about it and um, I think it makes sense to at least store the white, white space pre-wrap property in the style because because line breaks. Um, we'll do a few more tests while fixing this just to see whether there is other things that are affected by this. But hopefully this is the one and only. Um, and I might not explain everything because I really want to go fast with this. But if anyone is around and wants to know more about what is going on Please feel free to reach out and um, I'll try my best to answer questions. Um, so what do we need? We need a way to test the copy-paste of most if not all features of this editor, um, especially the ones that might rely, might rely on style. And two, we need a um, fix for the specific things that have changed. So the best way to know if things have changed is to start from this paste test document which is meant exactly as a way to um, test copy paste matters so specifically here it's copy paste coming from the editor so it has to come from there that's the that's the previous version so one more time we'll go through all of this and one by one identify what has changed and how and I'll probably put them side by side for convenience so, source and output. Once it's been in Draft.js, once. Um, start bound to top. So, bold, italic, bold, like that's all there. Bold, monospace is there. Underline is gone, bigger, smaller, subscript. And this time, let's really try to be critical. So, this has turned into mesh colored text just because it's using the right tag but it doesn't have an href so it's probably removing them. Um, I should write a note about this somewhere. Use href with correct value on a tag to improve copy paste behavior. Okay. Um, up next, text blocks, all the indentation is gone, perfect. H1 is gone, H2 is here but with the wrong styles, but we'll, that will be fixed. Um, H3 is there, H4, H... Oh, that's normal text. Is there a reason for that? Does, it, does the editor allow? Oh, it doesn't stop at h4 that's why <clears throat> so it's gone great then there's lists as to write indentation levels but not the right list type oh, and number list is gone did we have number list with the new one if i do this what happens Just interesting. Um, what markup is it using over there? 
There's an oil and an area ally. There's two. Why is it not keeping them? That's interesting. Okay, it seems to be consistent at least. Oh, it's keeping the second one. Now that's getting weird. Oh well, I won't worry about this this time around because it's obviously not working in the current version either. But I probably should um, do a more thorough investigation. Investigate ways to improve copy-paste from a user. Um, yeah, every time you fix something, you always find out about new issues. Um, yeah, so same for the style. It's preserving the indentation, but not the actual semantic levels. Image is gone. Table is gone. Horizontal line code block. Line break is there. That's the one we want back. And that's there, but not with the right yeah. emojis are there as well. Yeah, so the, the one thing is really, really is just this line breaks. Um, so trying it again with a new one. I wish I had done this testing before. It's a shame that I had to go all the way to DraftL and with a push fixed in order to find out about that. I was expecting there to be some difference because I knew that I had removed all of them. All of the inline styles, or at least not added them manually, but I wasn't expecting it to be anything problematic, of course. Two, three, four, five, and here, as you can see, the styles are not as custom compared to the previous version that had the Wagtail styles, since it comes from Wagtail. I don't know why anyone ever thought it was a good idea to replicate the styles of the source um, when you copy paste rich text. Like, who wants to copy paste something into a Word doc and have the styles from the source? Like, I know it can be convenient at times, but still, like, what's the idea? Um, H2, H2 is there, H3, H3, H4, H4. And yeah, that's just normal text. Oh, it has it has H5 in my new demo. Yeah, it does. That's why. And this is just as italic. And then this is missing the indentation, but at least it has the correct list types. Mm. Mm. One of the images is gone, but that doesn't bother me too much. The table, yep, the line break is missing, no line break here, line break there. Interestingly, those are all here, except with different types, of course, because this is a drawing and this is just an image of the drawing. Um, but yeah, it's really trying its best. So let's fix that. Um, git, what is it, a bug or a feature? Hmm. Let's call it a feature. Well, it's breaking the previous behavior. But I'm not sure the previous behavior was anything intentional. Oh, let's call it a bug. Um, copy, paste, line, break um, copy paste preserve line break I tend to write very long branch names these days because otherwise I just forget what I've done after a while and code and we can close that for now and here start this project that's the only drawback of dividing your code into a thousand different projects. Then if something breaks, you have to figure out where to fix it and then you have to upgrade whatever using the package to fix it in. Um, 
<laughs> so Draft.js Conductor is the project where the copy-based override is happening. Um, and from what I gather, basically it needs this custom behavior for the line breaks. Um, so right now it has this new behavior I just finished doing yesterday where it um, sets the HTML in the clipboard based on the selection on the page. So the selection is taken from here with the DOM selection API. Um, and then we need to set an attribute, I assume, on this tag that has the correct style. So I'll do it like a very hacky way just to see what happens. Um, and let's also just check the MDN docs on, on white space, white space pre-wrap. Um, just so I know what I'm typing. And we can probably close all of that. Mm. And I could probably stop the recording right there. That would help with the RAM. Okay. Oh, my computer is just dying with the recording. I need to find a new way, maybe make make for a smaller smaller screen or <laughs> get a better laptop. Um, so maybe add a comment about this even though it's not finished yet. We um, set the style property to replicate the browser's behavior. of inlining styles in rich text copy paste. Okay. I tend to write a lot of comments these days, um, not because I think my code needs explanation, like what's going on right there, but uh, just to explain the reasoning so that if I do ever need to debug this, I remember that I need to worry about line breaks in particular. So pre-wrap, yeah, that's the one, but that's the thing that I want. Only broken at nine characters in the source. Okay. What's the default value? Normal. Yeah, so it's both wrap, which is if the line goes bigger than the container, then wrap and new line and VR. That seems perfect. Yeah, okay, and the difference here is if there is multiple, if there is a sequence, sequence of white space between those two. New lines preserve, okay. That's what I want. Spaces and tabs preserve text wrapping wrap. Okay, that looks quite appropriate for Draft.js. Um, let's see if I can quickly figure out where this comes from, though. Like what parts of um, of the tool sets sets the pre wrap style. Uh, my computer is having such a hard time with the streaming. Okay. Let's remove that. And now I only have one thing to answer, which is where does pre-wrap come from?
Okay, and that's easy. It comes from DriveJS, which sets it on the editor content tag style outline on user select. Let's see if we can read the DriveJS source and see where this comes from. Um, GitHub, Facebook, DraftJS, and how do we look this up? We just try for pre wrap. Right there. Okay, so presumably it would be better to have all of these, except user select doesn't seem too relevant if you're inside a paste. And world wrap, break what? What is that? I think of myself as a front end developer, but if you ask me to remember so many CSS properties, I just have no chance. And there's just so many of them. Is that even a thing that exists? World wrap. Oh, okay, it's the same as overflow wrap. And break world. Normally end, oh, okay. So that doesn't seem too relevant to the paste either, because that's, or is it? I mean, the problem is that all of this CSS is presentational, but still it does seem that Google Docs, when you paste it into, it into itself, tries to interpret it somehow as semantics. Hmm. What happens if I have a very long word in here? not meant to be that slow in real life, it's just because my computer. Yeah, okay, it just goes to the line. So that's the break word in action, I think, because this is a single word. And let's see, it's not even that. Hmm, interesting, so there is something else at play. I'll try to leave it out because I think that the pre wrap thing is enough. Um, I'll quickly do a blame on this to see where the pre wrap comes from because I, I saw it quickly in the changelog in the search. Um, there was that, this, and the changelog right there. Pre. Inline style to resolve insertion issues. That is very cryptic. Move critical, now we never apply reports. No, okay. I see. For line breaks to be interpreted correctly when pasted into another web processor. Okay, so that should be it. Um, usually when I reproduce a bug like that, I always like to try it once with the bug still there, just to make sure it's still an issue. Um, but I also want to try this fix quickly. So first we'll try it with the fix, then without it, then with it again, and call it a day. Um, of course, have tra having tried in a couple of browsers. So the, whole, the only thing we're going to try here is what happens if you paste something that has a line break into Google Docs. 
So we make a line break. And it's easier to view. Ah, yeah, I didn't change that. So this is not drafted. This is all right there. This is not the same as that one. So most of it, most of this editor's behavior is simpler, and you cannot break out of list items, for example. But anyway, so paste. Okay, and it's there. So that works. So now we can try again, removing this and trying out the same exact same thing. It's good we are doing this fix right now because then you get to see me releasing not one but two projects on the same evening, hopefully, if we have time. Um, yeah, so the fix shouldn't be there anymore. So let's try the exact same thing. List item, text, line break, blah blah. Break out more text. Copy, paste, fail. Great. Add the fix back in. Um, do I want to link to the draft.js source for that? Probably I do. I spend so much more time reading this code than writing it. So anything that can make it more understandable from the reader's perspective, that is just adding more details, um, is usually worth it. So one more test. Rup, line, break, breakouts, write some stuff, copy everything, and bam, it works. Okay, nice. Um, so let's try this in a couple of browsers. I don't want to try this in too many because really this is just adding a style attribute to the HTML in the paste. So I know it won't make a fundamental difference and I don't want to um, assert any kind of support for copying rich text between browsers to, to Google Docs or whatever. Um, but I guess it would be nice to know if it works in other browsers like Firefox and, and Safari. Um, I would expect this rich text copy paste behavior to be different between browsers, but since I'm overriding it, um, it might also be very similar. If it was the default behavior, I would expect it to be different, but since here it's my override that we are trying, um, let's see what happens. And to make matters even simpler, I'll copy from Firefox into Chrome, because why not? Um, break. Blah, 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 blah. And this last um, last block is because otherwise it fails to properly select the list item and it makes it harder to see whether the line breaks there or not. Okay, well, I won't test it any further because it's really just one more attribute. And I'll, I'll do a full full scale testing before this gets merged into Wagtail anyway, so I really don't think it's worth doing it right now. Um, yeah, that was a really short, small change. Um, so on this project, compared to drafted over there, you get to see both styles. On this project, I have some tooling that generates the change log directly from um, the, the commits. Um, so the commits have to follow this specific convention that's coming from um, conventional commits, I think. What's the name? Yeah, conventional commits. So this is a convention around commit messages that I think initially comes the, from the AngularJS team and it's been quite popular since then. Um, so commit message bug in copy paste. So you always have to um, annotate the commit with the change type and of the scope or context of the change. So in, in that case, copy paste, and the change type is a bug. And then the message is, um, probably want to write a full scale commit message, not just a header line. Okay. Hmm, did I say I wanted to, I wanted to point to the specific line, right? Can I switch this to view mode?
Pre-wrap, where are you? Right there. Copy permalink. Okay. I'm pretty confident. Oh, actually, it might, it might change my snapshots. Do I have any snapshots of copy paste? Probably don't. This is a bit hard to write any kind of automate, automated test for because what we are improving here is the behavior of Google Docs, not of um, the editor itself. So the only thing I could test is that it does set pre-wrap on the tag, but that, that seems a bit meaningless at, at best. Um, so I won't write any, any more tests for that. I just want to see if it's going to change the ones I have existing. Um, that use too much snapshot. Yeah, we'll probably change that. Yep, guess what? It did. So we have to regenerate the snapshot, which would work better like that. We're still all using Jest. Um, Jest is one of my favorite open source tools these days um, for testing. In it's just super fast and super easy to use in, in watch mode and with coverage and everything. It's such a breeze. It supports all types of testing. In the past, Mocha, you could only use Mocha or Jasmine, you could only use them for unit tests, whereas just you can write assertions for anything. It really is cool. There's not much stored snapshot. Yeah, so the only difference should be this style tag that we have right there that's missing from up here. So we want to update the snapshots. When you when you work with snapshots like that, it's quite tempting to always press update and move on. But that's really not the point. The point is to compare meaningfully what has changed. So I'll still review it um, with a diff in, in it once the test have on running. Um, Yeah, it still is very slow when my computer is crammed like that with the CPU being taken over by the streaming software. So, best way to review this is to take it here and side by side see whether they align up to here and then there is a style and back to aligning. So that seems fine to me. So back to the git commit. And we just ran the test, so I'll run it with no verify because there's still CI anyway, so um, worst case I lose time. Um, preserve line breaks for pasting into Google Docs. Let's say word processors and commit messages um, adds white space pre wrap to um, wrapper HTML um, like a browser would. So word processors. know that line breaks are semantic and not just craft from whatever made the form of the HTML and commit and then push the branch and now we get to watch my CI pipeline <laughs> so let's um, create a pull request for this it would be really cool if GitHub had the same as GitLab and Bitbucket, where when you push a new branch, it offers to um, make a pull request for it. I don't know why they don't have that. So compare and pull request. Um, 
label, we said it's a bug. Milestone, I don't use them on this project. Reviewer, I'm the only one. Maybe just add some milestone formatting right there. Yep, yep. Even if I'm only the only one on the project, I think it's always good to um, have a quick look at your code just outside of the editor. You might still spot things you missed otherwise. Um, yeah, that seems clear enough. Okay, we'll just wait for the CI pipeline to happen for this, then merge it, hopefully, and get it into the project and make a new release of that project. Use the new release in Drafttail and try that again over there. And once that's done, we can make a release of Drafttail and then make a pull request to Wagtail, which was the whole point of this stream, but you know, never too late. Um, and the second point was for me to do some issue triaging on GitHub, but let's see whether I have time for that. Maybe I'll just do a couple. Um, should we watch the CI pipeline running? How can I save some time on this? Maybe just like start setting up my environment for Wagtail. So when we get to that, uh, it starts quickly. Maybe just close this down. Yep. So yeah, fix the bug down. <laughs> that was me being very optimistic.